arthropods are descendants of a common ancestor that lived long before animals started colonizing land. The first arthropods appeared during the Cambrian period, more than 520 million years ago. Back then, life on Earth was dramatically different, and few animals looked anything like the ones we see around us today. Some of these animals had unusual body forms and bizarre appearances. Among these Cambrian organisms were the ancestors that gave rise to modern arthropods. Examination of the fossils tells us that even hundreds of millions of years ago, all arthropods had jointed appendages and segmented bodies, as they still do today. Let's look at one of the most successful groups of these ancient arthropods, the trilobites. Trilobites were one of the dominant arthropod groups present throughout the Cambrian period and even survived until the end of the Permian period, some 280 million years later. Fossil records show that many trilobite species had spiny exoskeletons, likely used for defensive purposes. They also had distinct body segmentation and jointed legs. Despite their diversity and abundance, trilobites, like all animals that lived during the Cambrian period, lived solely in marine environments. Although they were dominant organisms during the Cambrian, they were wiped out of existence at the end of the Permian period about 250 million years ago. The diversity of arthropods increased further as they began to colonize terrestrial habitats. In fact, the earliest identifiable fossils of land animals were arthropods. These fossils are from the Silurian period, around 440 to 420 million years ago. The fact that arthropods were the first animals to colonize land is not really surprising, as they already had some of the necessary adaptations. Their stiff exoskeletons and jointed appendages provided protection from drying out, support against gravity, and a means of locomotion that wasn't dependent on water. Insects themselves are not well represented in the early terrestrial fossil record, but the oldest fossil insect is believed to be about 400 million years old. Insect fossils may be found as impressions in solid rock or as preserved specimens in amber. Here, for example, we have an impression fossil of a march fly, while beside it we have a wasp preserved in amber, just like you may have seen in the 1993 movie Jurassic Park. Don't worry though, we won't be resurrecting any dinosaurs from this specimen. Although some arthropods, like dragonflies and true spiders, look much like they did when they first appeared 300 million years ago, many modern arthropods evolved much more recently. Ants, for example, evolved 140 million years ago, while honeybees evolved as recently as 34 million years ago. The University of Alberta houses a large paleontology collection that features a wide array of trilobite fossils. Lisa Budney, the Collections and Museums Administrator that oversees our Paleontology Museum, has provided us with some insight about fossil arthropods in the collection. Let's hear from her now. So my name is Lisa Budney. I'm the Collections and Museums Administrator for the Department of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences. The primary users of the Paleontology Museum include students and researchers. So these are university students that come from the University of Alberta or other post-secondary institutions to do coursework in the museums. Um, it also includes over 4,000 grade school children who come annually to do um, different curriculum-based programs with our guides. Uh, in terms of researchers, we have researchers that come from all over the world to examine specimens. The Paleontology Museum showcases life through time. So the specimens in the museum uh, are from all of the major animal groups and they're organized by time period. So the oldest fossils are from the Precambrian period and then we work our way around in the space to the most youngest fossils from the Holocene. So the arthropod collection at the University of Alberta is quite large. We have over 18,000 specimens and they're from two major groups. One is trilobites. We have over 10,000 trilobite fossils. And then the other is insects. We have over 3,100 specimens of fossil insects on campus. 
you go back to the Cambrian fossil deposits that we have, uh, arthropods are the most abundant group right from that period on. So I think we tend to think that since vertebrates are more flashy that they're the most abundant, but that may not necessarily be so. I'm sure at different times when we have uh, different kinds of settings in the geological rock record preserving fossils, sometimes vertebrates might be more abundant, but that doesn't necessarily represent what the case was in the past, right? It just represents what's in the rock record. But we do have evidence that arthropods have been a powerhouse on the Earth ever since they evolved. So the fossils that we have of insects in the museum are from the Eocene, which is about 56 million years ago to 39 million years ago. And one is a water strider, and it looks a lot like a water strider today that you'd find in the spring in your backyard in a pond. And the other one is a march fly, and you'll be able to see the wings and things on this march fly. Uh, when you think about arthropod fossils and what they can tell us about the groups of arthropods today, fossils in general provide a context of time. So when we see the animals that we have today, where did they come from? Where did they first evolve? When did they first evolve? Those are questions that fossils can help us answer. The most exceptional arthropod collection we have on campus is a collection of trilobites from the Devonian of Morocco. And it's the finest collection of trilobites from that time period and that location of any institution in the world. Uh, from this uh, area, we're describing many new species of trilobite that have never been found before. And many of these species have unusual spines and they have different, um, different uh, ornamentations on their heads that we don't usually see in trilobites, which makes them a really interesting group to study. So we have a couple of very spectacular fossils inside the museum here. One is of Anomalocaris. This is a creature from the Cambrian, uh, so time of the great diverse explosion. And on our fossil, we just have this part here, which is pretty impressive. This is an appendage that could uh, scooch food towards the mouth here. And uh, Anomalocaris could grow to be up to a meter. It was one of the top predators of its time. This is a fossil a tiger prawn. It's from the Jurassic and it comes from Germany. There are several different locations in Germany that are well known for their exceptional preservation of arthropods. Uh, this one here is called a lithographic limestone. And so you can see that it's almost like a painting. You can see the head end of the tiger prawn and the tail end, and you can see the different body segments. And it's a nice example of kind of a living fossil. So a living fossil is a fossil that's been around for tens to hundreds of millions of years, but hasn't changed much. And so a tiger prawn would be an example of that. When you think about the extinction of a major group of animals that was so abundant, like the trilobites, um, you have to consider uh, the great time range in which they lived. So they first evolved 521 million years ago and lived until 250 million years ago. In that time, they survived four major extinction events with different causes, and we're still understanding those causes today with uh, new analytical geochemical methods. So considering all of the millions of different species that have ever existed for arthropods, my favorite are damselflies. Um, I like damselflies because it's uh, like playing a game of I spy in nature in order to spot a damselfly. You have to be very observant and they're very colorful once you see them and they tend to s sit still so you can take decent photographs of them. Given the hundreds of millions of years that arthropods have had to diversify on Earth, how do we keep track of which arthropod is which? Scientists group life forms according to how closely they are related to each other. Traditionally, this relatedness was solely determined based on morphological traits. That is, features that you could physically see on fossil and modern specimens. Although these traits are still studied today, we can also use genetic material to understand the phylogeny or evolutionary history of related organisms. This phylogenetic information is incorporated into the classification system known as taxonomy, in which we define, name, and group biological organisms.
The biggest or most inclusive rank in taxonomy is called the domain. It is further divided into the following ranks of increasing specificity. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and finally, species. All animals belong to the kingdom Animalia. Within this kingdom, arthropods belong to the phylum Arthropoda. There are several major groupings of arthropods. Calicerata, Myriapoda, Crustacea, and Hexapoda. The Calicerata includes organisms such as horseshoe crabs, scorpions, spiders, ticks, and mites. Members of the Calicerata have very diverse ecological roles that range from predators, mainly of other arthropods, to herbivores, to parasites of medical concern. The group Myriapoda contains the many-legged millipedes and centipedes, which are detritivores and carnivores, respectively. They are found on all continents except Antarctica. Finally, we have the groups Crustacea and Hexapoda. The Crustacea includes many marine arthropods like crabs and lobsters, as well as terrestrial crustaceans like some of the isopods. Meanwhile, the Hexapoda includes the insects and a few non-insect groups. Recent studies have suggested that hexapods and crustaceans should be grouped together to form a group called pancrustacea. This suggests that hexapods and crustaceans are more closely related to each other than to myriapods, and that hexapods, including the insects, likely evolved from a crustacean ancestor. Most of this course will focus specifically on insects. Let's begin by learning what insects are and how we can differentiate them from other hexapods and more distantly related terrestrial arthropods, such as spiders and millipedes. The easiest way to tell an insect from any other arthropod is to look at four main characteristics in an adult specimen. The number of body regions, the number of legs, the number of antennae, and the presence of wings. Let's compare these characteristics among insects, non-insect hexapods, myriapods, and the terrestrial calicerates, arachnids. First, let's look at the number of body regions. Most calicerates and myriapods have two body regions, or tagmata. Depending on the organism, the two tagmata can be quite different. For example, Spiders have two body regions, the cephalothorax and the abdomen, whereas in myriapods, the two body regions are known as the head and the trunk. Adult hexapods have three body regions, the head, thorax, and the abdomen. Another way to distinguish hexapods from other terrestrial arthropods is by counting the number of legs. In the absence of any unfortunate injuries, most adult calicerates have four pairs of legs, while adult myriapods have at least eight pairs. Adult hexapods have three pairs of legs. The number of antennae present is another distinguishing characteristic between various groups of arthropods. Antennae are sensory structures located on the head. Calicerates do not have antennae, which distinguishes them from the myriapods and hexapods, both of which have one pair. Another way to distinguish insects from calicerates, myriapods, and non-insect hexapods is to look for the presence of wings in the adults. Insects normally have two pairs of wings as adults. In fact, insects are the only invertebrates with wings. However, there are insects with only one pair of wings or no wings at all. Non-insect hexapods do not have wings. So if you see an arthropod flying past you, you can be 100% certain it's an insect. 
So far, we have uncovered only one clear difference between insects and non-insect hexapods. Insects normally have wings, while non-insect hexapods do not. The way to distinguish between the two groups is based on the location of their mouth parts. Non-insect hexapods have entognathous mouth parts, meaning that their mouth parts lie in a cavity within the head. Meanwhile, insects have ectognathous mouth parts that are not enclosed and are external to the head. Now that you have a better idea of how to distinguish between the various types of arthropods, our next few videos will focus on insects. Specifically, we will explore what it is about insects that has allowed them to diversify into such a species-rich group.